Morning, Sean. Morning, Alex. How you guys doing? Morning. Good. Doing great. This is uh, this is your podcast uh, debut for both you guys. Yes, yes it is. Yeah. Thanks a lot for having us out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Good to have you guys here. Um, so for those who don't know, Sean, Alex from uh, from DataCore, a, a good long term partner of TCC and uh, important on our side with the marketing and sales and all that uh, fun stuff. Um, I guess to kick things off, you know, since you're brand new guest to the podcast, why don't you guys uh, introduce uh, each of yourselves and then whoever wants to give the, the data core one one I'll give you the floor. Um, but maybe Sean, we'll start with you yeah. as the as the veteran here. Oh, that's right. great. Uh, my name is Sean Duran, uh, data core senior customer success manager. Um, data core is a, an ERP, enterprise resource planning and a CRM customer relationship management software uh, provider, B2B solutions for uh, primarily focused within the highly regulated chemical distribution and process manufacturing space. I've been around for uh, a little over 40 years, so it's not our first rodeo, and uh, excited to be here uh, supporting uh, this podcast and uh, get an opportunity to share some of the new stuff that we've been working on and making sure that uh, you get recognition for being such leaders and working with us so closely uh, over the years. Yes. Yeah. Uh, really appreciate this. Absolutely. Thanks. Appreciate having you guys here. And yeah. uh, I guess the, the relative newcomer here to the group. Yeah. Um, so my name is Alex Cochran. I'm the product manager for the CRM at DataCore. Uh, so my job is to, you know, keep pushing our CRM platform forward, make sure that we're solving the problems for customers like you guys, make sure that we're, uh, you know, continuing to, to you know, add enhancements and, and, you know, solve those problems that you guys have. Perfect. Um, and I know you kind of said a little bit, but you know, what's the, what's the e-pitch on, on data core? What, you know, what, what are the historical services you guys have offered and you know, yeah. what you guys have done in the last couple of years? It's been exciting. A lot of, I, I threw out a bunch of acronyms there, but, um, <laughs> we love acronyms. Chemical yeah. industry loves, <laughs> loves acronyms. Yeah. Uh, especially in the regulation side. But so, uh, well, I guess what big differentiator is that, uh, you know, we started, uh, collaboratively within the chemical distribution space, solving problems back when computers didn't really have mice. And uh, we've maintained that relevance and the focus. And a big part of that is that we're, we work really closely with our customers to understand what are the driving factors of running a chemical company. That's important. So you got to put in a sales order. We know that you may sell the same product to 15 different customers with 15 different prices, three different units of measure, packaging, but you need to know how profitable you are on it. So there's a lot of nuances that are involved within the chemical industry and we are a, a niche software solution that provides a, a perfect fit for customers that have to have to accommodate those requirements yeah, and obviously you guys have been quite busy the last what five years i guess with between adding folks and adding companies and brands to your guys umbrella it's quite the get quite the group yeah that's right um so like i said uh, originated in 1981 but uh you know as far as the uh the Leadership goes, we have recently had, um, you know, Sean O'Donnell, who was one of the first salespeople and became president, uh, had passed the baton to new leadership. He's still, you know, steering the ship in many ways, but uh, getting a little bit more time on the greens, which is well-deserved. But in that process of passing the baton to uh, the younger generation, uh, there's the big opportunity to expand DataCore's presence, not just within the chemical distribution space, but uh, larger within the regulated food and beverage and process manufacturing. So doing a lot of work, um, building out our, our companies uh, strategically from a management perspective and bringing in best class employees to make sure that as we grow, we grow smartly, strategically, and uh, we're, we're building the products that our customers need. Yep. And I guess jumping mm -hmm. to you, Alex, obviously there's the, the kind of newcomer jumping in yeah. and seeing what, what DataCore has had going on and, and, and is working on, um, you know, from your point of view, what, what's kind of, what's, what's getting you excited about the industry and the company and, you know, some of right. the things you've been working on the last, I guess, year or two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've been with the company for about a year. Um, I've had a long history in product management, uh, sure. thinking about solutions in different industries and kind of different roles. Um, I'm really excited about DataCore because of that integration between the CRM and the ERP and a lot of these other um, companies that we're taking a look at that we've um, been piecing together over the past few years. Um, building that kind of overall suite of things that we can do for our customers um, and providing that connectivity across uh, their organization. So, uh, you know, I'm <laughs> excited to push those things forward and, sure. and really have that kind of value that you can't get without, you know, spending a ton of money trying to, uh, you know, do it yourself. Yeah. 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 And I think that's one of the, 
probably more refreshing things too is it's you know i think me being involved in the marketing side and systems and tools and all that stuff it's, it's so easy for companies to say oh we have this great xyz feature and this does this and you know oh this video platform does this and it's like that's all it's all cool it's all a very cool thing but like how does it tie back to business and sales and profit like you had just mentioned it's it's right. always nice hearing companies especially like yourselves that are like you know we can do this xyz we bought this company to do this and it's all going to tie back to showing you dollars and cents and make more money and be more profitable and all that stuff. So it's always nice hearing, you know, especially technology companies and things like that are all tying it back to at the end of the day, we want the business to do better. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the end goal here. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, you know, we're doing our strategy and growing the business sort of by expanding our market uh, opportunities by going into different areas, but our bread and butter has always been the chemical distribution space. And yep. we've, I think we've prided ourselves on always having a very collaborative approach in in our product our product wouldn't be what it is today without meeting with our customers making sure what their problems are and solving those with with software right. it's not it's not rocket science but uh we do it pretty dang well and uh um these meetings like this we, we get better insights and you know things that we're doing to be more involved are like creating you know uh, limited availability programs with our customers to actually you know early on vet out Hey, does this look right? Is this going to add value? If not, scrap it. Let's start over. Sure. What's most important? Um, so, you know, some of the initiatives that we're doing lately, you know, in response to a lot of the sort of craze around AI and all those things, are you know, people are seeing that, but there's also constraints within the workforce. People are concerned, cash flow constrained. They want to do more with less. So everyone's wanting to do automation, right? Yep. So, uh, we've we've built out a more robust automation suite. Uh, that allows you to you know, drag and drop, drag and drop documents in automatically, enter in transactions and whatnot, but also better better integrations with big partners. So people are going back to uh, EDI, and then of course the the more common route is our API solutions, and then there's analytics, and it's, so everyone's trying to do more with less, and we're just trying to make sure that they're aware of what we have today, and that we're keeping pace with demands as they come on. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it's, it's probably an interesting time specifically in the kind of technology space and, you know, the software as a service piece of it. You know, you get all these buzzwords, AI, and then there was blockchain and there's all these different things that get thrown around and it's all important and it's all important to understand how it can work and how it can benefit your business and whatnot. And I think the other side of that is people expect very quick solutions. People expect technology to roll very fast. People expect the new Apple iOS every year with the new shiny features. Yeah. So there's, a, I'm sure, pressure on you guys to keep innovating and developing and compete with the SAPs and Oracles and Salesforce of the world and that whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Some, sometimes it's just putting a little lipstick on a pig yeah. you know, because <laughs> yep. it looks old. Like, oh, you mean it, we just needed to make it a rounder and a shadow on that button <laughs> yep. and then now it looks fresh and clean and new colors same, i can, I can same. just hear the the, 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 the the graphic design in the background giggling at that <laughs> we, don't, we don't use comic sans <laughs> if that helps at all. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a taboo in graphics right um but uh yeah like one of our differentiators as well I've, you know the crm integration is a big differentiator yep. for data core because um that nuanced aspect of like uh, a selling the same chemical or same product to people in various units of measure and be able to like compare how am I selling this product across all my customers? If I, if, though I sell this person in gallons, this person by the case, stuff like that. Yep. Like a lot of other systems struggle with that. And sure. so out of the box, we're trying to provide valuable insights to not only the, um, the people operating the business, but to the salespeople that need to make decisions. So a real differentiator is the tight integration with our CRM and the data analytics that's presented to the salespeople that's relevant and consumable and it answers questions that they need answered with one click right yep. so information and the access to it like you're saying people want it now and so um, often it happens to, to like just educating people it's there but they forgot to read the screen and hit the drop down and notice yep. that it was already there right yep. so um we're happy that we've been having a solution that's been solving problems well for a long time. We're making it color more colorful with better rounded edges to attract <laughs> people better. But uh, yeah, it's it's a solid uh, solid company that is focused and innovating uh, with the the newest technologies out there that we can. Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, with the ERP piece going from order entry to invoicing all the way to the sales side and prospecting and the marketing tools, it's yeah, it's you know it's a it's a, a full suite of 
of tools that's really all in one and especially if you're in our space it's fantastic yeah man I, uh, i'm usually one of the only uh software people at uh the trade shows sure. that we go to right yeah. and nobody else is having beers with you at the lobby bar at a uh at a you know I don't know, regulatory conference. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. who, who, what kind of software people think that that's where business is done. And there's a lot of business done with operations management because they're complaining about stuff that they never thought there was a solution for. Sure. And so, Hey, didn't you know about this button? Right click here. <laughs> Auto. Yep. Yep. So, so, so what yeah. are the, some of the big, uh, you know, what's, what's some of the big projects you you got on the horizon? What are the things that are, keeping you up at night for the next six to 12 <laughs> months. You know, what are the, what, what, what's the big picture things that folks right. are asking for and, and that you guys are putting priorities on that, that you're seeing in the industry? Yeah. Um, I think the answer to that is more so what's keeping you guys up at night <laughs> that we need to, to work on to, to help uh, out with, right? That is the correct answer to the question. Yeah, so yeah. good job. <laughs> um, <laughs> so and one of the things that we're super excited about over the next, you know, six months to a year is uh, taking another look at pricing. Uh, being able to surface uh, pricing information and concerns in a better way. Uh, you know, with the pandemic, uh, prices went all over the place. A sure. uh, lot of volatility across the business. Um, so giving or putting together tools that make it easier to go from, you know, this is an issue here that I need to take a look at, um, all the way through being able to uh, actually you know, uh, come to the right price and then put that in front of your customer in a, you know, kind of streamlined way. And, and so that's something that we're working through kind of early designs now that we're excited about. Um, you know, some, some early prototypes have gotten, you know, some, some good feedback. Um, but we're, uh, yeah, definitely looking to roll that out in the next, you know, six months, three years. Yep. And then I'd say also like, so I've been in the chemical space, uh, for about 12 years. And prior to that, I was in more of a B2C environment and sort of mirror sort of your ex, both your expectations and also like how the different sort of industries work, right? Business to business has been, was been slower probably to adopt technology, whereas the B2C companies are faster. Yeah. Yep. And that's more where we see experience. We get Amazon, click to pay one and we're like, why can't this happen in the B2B world? Right. Sure. It's common. It, it's, it's common. Um, and so automation and solutions like that, click to pay, all of those are available. Um, and a big part of that is having a robust API um, set. And those APIs, for those that are not aware, I know it's weird. Uh, I can give you the real acronym or I can just tell you that it's the way that two softwares the, the, talk to each other. Oh, no, I want the other you one. The, the, one? I, I want the other one you gave earlier because it's the best explanation of APIs <laughs> I've ever heard. So, so an, a, an API is uh, basically the hose that connects two softwares together in, in, in the internet. And what's really important is that you, you make sure that the APIs have the right uh, adapters. So they always screw in their universal adapters. So we're building those APIs with the universal adapters so that you can plug and play with whatever modern software is out there. And that really un unleashes, you know, let other people be creative and awesome. Sure. We're great at what we do. We're not trying to be great at everything. Uh, so best in class, bring it in and we're happy to integrate and, and collaborate. Did, did you give him that metaphor? Or where did he... <laughs> no, no. He came up with it all on his own. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's it, I use the hose one because it's how, because ultimately you're sending information yeah. back and forth. And right. unless those, those, those connections are solid, you, you get... I don't know. Yeah. Leak and stuff. Which, which in itself is an important realization that you guys are great at X, Y, and Z, but you don't need to do the whole alphabet, you know, stick to what you guys are good at and then, you know, let the other information and marketing tools and what like, you know, feed out from, from there. So it's, it's exciting. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but then we also have to serve like a variety of different customer sizes, right? So you have your, just like you likely have customers that are, you know, uh, they could be small family owned businesses with maybe five employees. And then you have your, you know, uh, two billion dollar companies with sure. divisions and complexities galore and all that. So we have to service all of those, and and you wouldn't be surprised, or you may be surprised that uh, same problems, different level of like like priorities and all of that. So yep. um, we have to make sure our software is scalable and it works for both small and the large. Sure. Not an, not an easy undertaking, but uh, or that's what's really important about having a support system and team also behind the scenes that understands the industry because answering 
answering questions about the same program from two different companies, you get two different answers. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's uh, un unnecessary detail, but uh, our support system is is a critical part of the solution as well because we're not your um, generic SAP or Microsoft. We're both a single source for developing it and supporting it and implementing it. Yep. So that's another differentiating factor because like our industry expertise isn't just reliant on some reseller. We have it in house and we nurture that. And we, sure. we, it's, it's so important that our support people understand what our customers do right. so that they can answer questions appropriately. Like, that's what you expect, right? You expect you call and be like, why isn't this working? Like, I know exactly what you're probably doing because I understand your industry. Yep. Right? Yep. Yeah. No, 100%. Um, well, uh, you know, it was a great to kind of have a chat with you guys. Great to, you know, better understand your guys' business and what to come and ways we can continue, you know, developing some of these tools together and whatnot. Yeah. Um, you guys have, uh, you guys have any travel or trade shows coming up or what's, what's the best way that folks can, can reach out to you guys or get in touch with you? Um, on my OnlyFans account. <laughs> 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 now, um, just uh, hit us up on Datacore. Uh, LinkedIn uh, is usually where we post a lot of our content. Um, mm -hmm. um, you can search for my name on there. Uh, hopefully I'm one of the better Sean Durans out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, well, I can share my contact information. You can put up a QR code, see if somebody will actually stop the video and pick their camera up and scan a QR code. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Ch challenge accepted, Zach. We're going to see what we can do there. Um, but, awesome. uh, yeah. Um, where next shows, uh, I'll be at the uh, NACD Northeast. I believe it's right here in Providence uh, at the right. end of September. Yep. Um, we'll be at the annual. NACD is a real important uh, association for Data Core. Sure. Um, but we're also at like the AFPM. We'll be at IFT. We'll be at Adhesive Sealants. So there's a variety. Um, check out our website. We have uh, webinars and uh, locations we'll be visiting uh, regularly. Uh, webinars are a great way to keep uh, up to speed. I know we're not as fancy as you guys with these podcasts, <laughs> right. but uh, we do ha try to have some focused uh, webinars on a routine basis to educate our customers on what's new, sure. what's coming up, and uh, what's relevant. Awesome. We well, appreciate you guys making the trip. Appreciate you guys making some time for the uh, for the podcast yeah, thank here. Thank you so much for having us. It was good. Good talking to you guys. Good. Uh, you know, we we appreciate the the support and you know the the back and forth with some of the tools we need and the, you know the things that we need to grow the business and also the stuff you guys are working on and are promoting. Obviously grow the business as well. It's been, I think, a great long term, you know, even before all of our times uh, at our respective companies that I know the two have worked together. So it's it's been awesome and, and we appreciate the support. Yeah, man, it, right. we couldn't do it without you. And like, you guys are really, um, you guys are, you're a step ahead of some customers. I don't have to name names, but uh, it's good to have customers that are, are seeking out innovation and uh, and are, are and are actively implementing, and that like I see that in in the chemical company, and uh, it, our relationship only gets stronger the more we interact like this. So I'll be back for round two whenever you like. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Looking right. forward to it. Thanks, Thank man. you guys, and right. we'll Thank see you. you again soon. All right. All right. Take care. The material contained on this podcast is provided by the chemical company solely for informational purposes. The information is not guaranteed to be correct, complete, or up to date. The information in the podcast is intended solely as a general education aid. TCC is providing this podcast as a public service, but it is neither a legal interpretation nor a statement of TCC policy. Reference to any specific product or entity does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by TCC. The views expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. Views and opinions expressed by TCC employees are those of the employees and do not necessarily reflect the view of TCC or any of its officials. All statements, comments, and opinions presented are made in the context of robust dialogue and freedom of expression. TCC assumes no responsibility for any consequence relating directly or indirectly to any action or inaction taken based on the information in this podcast. While TCC strives to keep the information in the podcast accurate, complete and up to date, we cannot guarantee and will not be responsible for any damage or loss related to the accuracy, completeness, or timeliness of the information. TCC assumes no liability for any errors or omissions in the content of this podcast. The information contained on the podcast is provided entirely on an as-is basis with no guarantees of completeness, accuracy, usefulness, or timeliness. Thank you for streaming the View from Jamestown podcast edition. Like and subscribe for more.